Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for coming. My name is Nick Young. I am the Creative Director of Creative Youth Network. So thank you for coming to today's virtual event. I'm sure you're all used to it by now. Um, today is a work in progress sharing by our 2020 Creative Futures cohort, followed by a panel discussion with them on their work, their hopes, their fears and ambitions for emergent artists and the wider sector. We will also be launching our Creative You campaign a little bit later in the session, which is something we would like you, all of you here to engage with and to support us on, but more on that shortly. Um, before we get started, a bit of housekeeping. We haven't got any fire alarm drills planned today, so if you do hear one, then please go down and check your oven chips. Um, in light of recent relaxations of social distancing guide guidelines, I'd like us all to take a moment to shuffle a little bit closer to our screens. Okay, excellent. And finally, in light of the prolonged closure of hairdressers and barbers, if you hear any expletives or derogatory comments about fop-haired idiots ruining our sector, please rest assured that the panel are talking about our vain, glorious leader in number 10 and not your fine selves. Thank you. So, Creative Futures. The four young professionals you will meet today have been with us for the past six months on a personal and professional development program one in which they have developed a range of skills and practice from designing and leading workshops for young people through to pitching ideas to organisations. Alongside this, they've worked on new pieces of artwork of their own, which we will see. Today was supposed to be the grand end of programme exhibition, but as I'm sure we all know, the current lockdown has deprived them from studio space to make and also space to share their work, which does mean that today is a sharing of works in progress instead. There will be a full in the flesh, as it were, event in the autumn, uh, to which you will all be invited, of course. Um, you should have received the links to their websites with their work on for uh, in the Zoom invitation. However, if you did miss it, then the links will be in the chat now for you to peruse. Um, we're going to start the session with a meet the team video, after which we will move to a live panel discussion with the artists. During this, you will be able to submit questions to them via the chat and only via the chat. Please, can you keep your mics muted throughout? Um, if you would like to speak to them and you feel all enthused and, and you want to carry on the discussions, then uh, we will, uh, you can send us your details and we'll pass them on to the team for them to contact you directly. After the panel, we will have a brief introduction to our hot off the press Creative You campaign and we will wrap up by 3.30 at the absolute latest. So, first of all, we're going to kick off with our video interviews. If you haven't got your popcorn by now, then it's too late, I'm afraid. Please give positive vibrations and your undiluted attention to Lucia, to Lucia Sophia, Callum and Ryan. Um, before Creative Futures, I didn't really see myself as an artist, um, so I didn't really have a, an idea of a career for myself as creative. Um, I didn't really have an artistic voice, and that's something that's definitely developed um, over the past six months. Um, the journey that my project has gone on um, has been sort of a, a de development of my like creative voice, my artistic voice. Um, and what I want to say as an artist and what I want to say as a writer um, and different ways in which I can sort of say the same message but in a different way. Um, so through poetry and short stories, different aspects of my being can be interpreted by other people in different ways. Um, that's something that's definitely been quite new to me, seeing all those things as distinct, unique, as well as connected um, and seeing them all as important. Um, and sort of manageable within my career. Um, so some of the work I've produced, like I said, I've written some short stories, um, sort of started writing and producing some music and poetry as well. And also I've been, um, conversations that I'm having with people and recording them and isolating parts that I think are significant. So sort of exploring how words can be used to depict a narrative. Um, yeah, and sort of the support on Creative Futures to do that has been like exceptional. Um, and it's something that I've never had before, support as a writer. Um, I've never had anyone to bounce off or 
um, a group of people to bounce off. So it's still really um, a really supportive environment. And um, if I could give myself one piece of advice, uh, it would be reach out to more people and don't diminish your artistic work. Because I feel like at the start, as, as I said, I didn't really see myself as an artist. Um, so I was more reserved about putting myself out there as an artist because that's what the platform was for, to develop yourself and create it. And I'm only really starting to come into myself as that person now. And um, so be more secure in who I am as an artist, I suppose. Um, this opportunity has opened a lot of doors, um, whether that be actual physical doors or like internal doors of like, oh, that is um, sort of a doable path for me. And I see the future. I, I want to be able to be supported on projects that I'm passionate about and projects that aren't looking for one type of art form um, and also looking for more interpretive um, works that are quite personal and identity based. Um, I want to explore marginalised sensuality more, which is something that I'm starting to look into in my work. Um, I want to do more research based projects that's incorporating my writing and my creativity into, into research about marginalisation and, and identity politics. And so that's sort of what I'm looking to do in the future. Um, what do I see the role of artists in society being today? I think the role of artists is like the most important role in society. Like as times move on, especially given like current circumstances, what is remembered more than anything is um, artistic interpretation of current events. And I think the way that music stands for centuries, the way that um, art stands for centuries, um, theatre, television, all of these things are intrinsic parts of every single person's life. And I think we forget the significance of artistry in the um, world and, and how tied it is to, to our happiness. So I think it's, as it has always been, um, completely necessary. Thank you. Lounging doesn't seem so futile. When the skin burns brown and sweat drips down your neck to your chest. Shallow breaths from the extreme relaxation. It is so hot, it hurts. There's no greater pleasure than pain. The sun makes me move, I lounge on hot to the touch. My foot flirts between the cool blanket I lay on and the scorching stone below, indulging in the beauty of both. Flies lay dead on their backs. The mint plant at the end of my roof stands dry and brown, breaking at the touch. The heat is so impressive, I can hear it. The heat is so destructive, I can see it. It was only a few months before I started Create a Future, so I just moved to Bristol. So the difficulties that I was facing during that time in launching my career was the fact that I didn't really know many people here. Um, I was finding it hard to connect with both people and, but also organisations as well. Um, understanding what facilities are here in Bristol um, and the different avenues that I could take within my career. I'd actually started this project a few months before Creative Futures, but having been on this programme has given me the time, space and focus to start developing my project from just a photographic point of view to a, a more a more challenging um, way of working where I'm also collecting materials and, and thinking about more than just photographs. Um, and the journey so far has been, been a bit rocky, really, um, especially with the uh, coronavirus has thrown a spanner in the works, um, not only for Create Futures programme, but also the shop itself that I'm documenting. So some of the work that I've made over this period has been obviously photographs, 35 mil. This is SLR and point and shoot. I've also used medium format and my scanner to make photographs using collective materials. Um, I've also been recording audio with the idea that the audio I'd be playing within a gallery space. Um, also looking at collecting boxes to make a little box sculpture, which is also to do with the gallery space. 
don't say yes to everything. There's a pandemic coming. Don't get disheartened. Keep keep making work, progressing. And as long as you're progressing, you're always going to end up on top. I'd like to work in a photo lab, 100%. But personally, with with photographs and stuff and project work, I think I might take this year a bit a bit slower because I've been full steam ahead since uni. Um, just to give myself a bit of a breather to enjoy things. I make photographs that I want to make rather than having to make stuff. Um, the role of artists in today's society, I believe, is to do with changing perspectives, highlighting and challenging issues in ways that people can interpret in their own way. I think I like so much in my career before creative features so was lacking in confidence. Um, I didn't really believe I was capable or at the right level to be applying for any creative work. And through conversations, my project has changed. Um, I've talked about what really matters and what's important to me, and that's led me to working on a project about my family history and where I've come from. Um, I've been making lots of collages and collecting recordings of conversations with family members, and um, I thought this was quite a lovely way to put it all together and show my collection. The advice I'd have given myself before starting creative features uh, to make sure that I've got plenty of time um, to give and to use my time nicely when thinking and creating. I feel like I'm at a stage where I feel secure in knowing what I want to do and where I want to go. I feel like I can approach creatives in the industry and say yes to more opportunities. Uh, so before creating futures, my main difficulty in establishing my career has been my health. Um, I've had a problem with my back for about eight years or so, and I've been really struggling with depression and kind of subsequent mental health issues of chronic pain. Um, so yeah, I've been off work for about two years before this, uh, with the intention of kind of trying to address my well-being. Um, I've been trying to use my art as a kind of tool to do this. Um, so yeah, I'd kind of stopped thinking about my career because I had to. Um, but now I'm in a position that I want to try and try and change that, try and get back to it. Um, so I've been seeing this as a sort of stepping stone and a sort of trial period to see if it's going to work. Uh, the intention behind this project has been to um, to kind of explore ways I can use my work as a kind of tool for my mental health and create this sort of internal conversation with myself to try and try and reprocess how I experience things and to change myself really. Um, so at the beginning of the project I kind of my focus was on uh, emphasizing process, trying to detach myself from thought and overthinking. Um, so kind of I've been doing a bit of painting, collage and making little sculptures of stuff I've not found over the months. All the things which I try not to plan what I'm going to make just sort of um, act based on intuition, kind of gut instinct. Um, and then as the project sort of, sort of developed, uh, it's been a continuing process of sort of looking back at stuff retrospectively and trying to see, um, trying to see any correlations or links between ideas and I don't know, see if there can be some sort of a, I guess what I'm trying to do is create a feedback loop between what's helped me mentally and use that within my art and then stuff within my art, see if that can help me mentally and just create this sort of dialogue and see what happens um, and it's been really helpful having the kind of mentoring support and even just the, the sort of having a project saying go make some work sort of thing knowing that it's it's for something official um, it helped me to kind of explore this this project I think yeah this is the first it's probably the first job I've had where I've communicated my back my mental health and employer and my kind of needs and then um, it definitely feels better to be more in communication i feel this is a, a good good context to have that kind of support and that's one of the more recent pieces of work i've been sort of playing around with is uh, i've got a little of these glue sticks and then um, i can find i need something in my hands as a kind of distraction or form of comfort and um, so i wanted to kind of explore this in my work and quite like this idea um, 
So I've just been playing around with that, and this is a sort of uh, little mindfulness meditation, really, where I just play around with the glue stick in my hands, try and be as aware of the shape and the weight and the feeling, and the, just be aware of that experience of playing with the glue stick um, and see what I can take away from it. And I made this quite a sort of uh, regular, not quite not quite a routine or ritual sort of thing, but I do it often, so I've got that loads of these, um, I've attached them to a little bit of wood, and I just think it'd be quite nice to see these en masse, like loads, because they've all got slightly different shapes and twists, and I just see what to do with it next. Like I like this idea of collecting a load of data based on a kind of process or an experience to which I don't know the end result. And then collecting all these things and then doing something with it. Um, I think these would be really nice displayed. I know all together or play around with the lighting or maybe the shadow created from it, something, or I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I like the idea of it being part of the process and the fact that that little meditation then results in an end piece from it. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with it. I think the advice I'd give to myself would be to trust in the process and put far less pressure on myself. Um, I kind of went around in a few ruts throughout the project, feeling like I just wasn't making the work that I wanted to be making. Um, but I kind of forgot that my intention was to just be making work and not worry too much about what I want to be making or why, that kind of side of things. Um, and yeah, I put loads of pressure on myself as well, feeling like I'd be wasting opportunities or I just end up overthinking stuff and then not enjoying making, which kind of contradicts the whole philosophy behind my work at the moment. Um, I'm really not too sure where I see my career path leading at the moment. Um, I still kind of see my work as this very inwards thing where I still feel in the position where I need to be using it as a sort of tool to feel better. Um, and until I kind of feel like I've done that, it, it's hard to think where next to go with it. But I suppose if I get to a point where I feel like it has really helped me, then I'd like to use it to help others and see if there's a way of doing that. I think the role of an artist is to create prompts for thoughts and kind of catalysts for new ideas and perspectives. And I think as a society, we're quite caught up with thoughts and we're not so aware of the mechanisms behind them, possibly. Um, and I think that's where art can come in to be kind of used as a sort of tool or a strategy to have that conversation with yourself. Um, I think all art is a sort of, it's a, it's a response to a conversation with a deeper sense of self. Lovely, fantastic stuff. Um, so just, uh, for, I'm aware that some people did join us during the videos. Um, so uh, first of all, if you've joined us a little bit late, welcome. Um, obviously we've heard a little bit from the artists there about their journey with us and the work they've been doing. Um, just to reiterate that you should have all received links to their websites, which has their work on in the Zoom invitation. And if you haven't got that, then it will be in the chat right now. So feel free to kind of, uh, have a look at what they've been working on over the past six months with us um, and of course just to say to reiterate again that these are works in progress and they are working towards a final full sharing that will be in the autumn as soon as we can do it safely. Um, uh, we're now going to move to the panel discussion with the four with the quartet which will be facilitated by Rory. Um, just to reiterate if you have any questions please don't unmute yourself and ask them please type them up put them into the into the uh, the group chat and we will kind of curate them and, and forward them on to the group um, and your questions can really be about anything it can be about their work it can be about their views on the the current kind of um, sector face in the arts whatever I mean really we want to kind of uh, this is an opportunity to hear from them about their thoughts uh, uh, so there we go and um, right over to you Rory 
Hey, thanks, Nick. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rory. I'm a trainee producer at Creative Union Network as part of the Creative Workforce for the Future program. Um, shortly, we will start, but before we do, can I just remind everybody that we are accepting questions through the chat. Um, we have team members working in the background to triage the questions, and I will get through as many as we can. However, if your question is not, uh, is not asked, and if you wish to continue the conversation, with uh, all or any of the cohort, then please get in touch and we'll pass uh, your details on to them. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our four panelists, Lucia Harry, Sophia Harari, Callum McCutcheon, and Brian Conbury Morani. Round of applause for them. Um, so I'm gonna start with a few questions to sort of just open up the discussion. So um, the, first, the first question, this will be, uh, how do you see your work developing between now and your full-time sort of show in the autumn? So I'm going to start this one uh, with Callum. I kind of want to develop uh, possibly that piece through Blue Sticks. That's quite a, uh, I don't know, it's quite a nice starting point. Um, but generally just continue to make this work that's kind of based around my well-being and try and develop that um, as much as I can really and support my health really more than for anything else. Um, yeah. And uh, how about you, Sophia? Um, I think at the moment, um, not just not that it's just words, but it's now it's on a website. It's in a virtual place, so to like physicalize um, words and story and storytelling and how and sort of figuring out how to make something that can be perceived as static more engaging in a physical space. So just sort of trying to figure out the most um, useful way to do that, really. And uh, Lucia, can we hear from you as well? So um, I'm definitely trying to make mine a bit more accessible and interactive. So to continue having these conversations and for me to keep learning about my family history and where I've come from, but to also put it in a way that anyone can sort of pick it up and understand or like listen to certain parts on their own terms instead of um, seeing it all in one go and like a more structured way of seeing it. Um, I want people to be able to sort of interact with my work a bit more and to, um, to pick and choose what they wanna listen to. And I think um, the conversation for me is the most important part. So I need to think of what I'm planning to, um, again, show that in really like beautiful and creative ways that are kind of, um, sort of suits the tone and the conversations and the topics, really. Yeah, and uh, can we hear from you as well, Ryan, about this? Uh... Yeah, well, the main thing really is I'm looking forward to when we have a bit more space again, um, leading up towards the final show, because that was the, um, the way that I'd envisioned the project and, and with the coronavirus and everything going digital, all of my physical like sort of mindset towards my work and, and how it's going to be seen and viewed in a physical space sort of went away so it'd be good to finally get back into a space and I've got like this one fat corner of my room that's just got loads of stuff from Porsons that that needs to come out um, and I just need to play around with it and work on how it's going to be uh, utilised within the physical space. Yeah sure sure. Um, got another question here as well. Like, what are your hopes and fears for the year ahead as an emerging professional in like anything or the the creative industries? So um, I'll start opening that one up to Lucia. Um, I feel like I hope, um, and I do fear as well that there might not be, but I hope there's still opportunities, sort of like creative futures, um where there is support and guidance and just it's like almost like a bit of safety um, in the creative industry. Uh, I do fear that as my career is progressing, um, am I going to have to keep doing lots of sort of unpaid work or, um, you know, kind of underselling myself a little bit or staying in like a certain part for a long time. I'm, so I, I hope that there's more opportunities like this. Um, yeah. Can we hear from you about this, Ryan? Uh, yeah, fears. It's, it, all of this is a bit more of a personal one for me rather than the, uh, the industry. But 
like I fear that come with uh, like no opportunities, like Lucia was saying, that like I become like unmotivated, um, just unable to like find myself within like a prog progressive um, like workflow and development. And, um, so, like the same thing, the same sort of um, sense. Like I hope that I can like progress so that my work is work is no longer to just pay the bills that I can shift over my professional practice into work so that I can enjoy my spare time and personal time for progress within that. Um, rather than like, I've just rather than doing loads of different bits of here, there and everywhere to focus it more in depth, down on something. Yeah. So you mean sort of like, um, allowing yourself to like focus on, going at your career the way that you want it rather than sort of having to do lots of different things, I guess. Is that kind of what you meant to say? Sorry, Ryan, that was, that was directed to you. I don't know if you heard me. Yeah, man, I was just saying, yeah, to be fair, I was agreeing with you. Yeah, cool. Uh, and then, yeah, sure. And then, uh, the, yeah, the same, same sort of question directed towards uh, Sophia, what were your like, hopes and fears as an emerging professional? Um... My hopes are just that I can just keep my like momentum going um, and understand and learn and figure out if there are like where the opportunities are for me um, and um, starting to understand how I can like spearhead my own projects as well because that's like something that I'm not really that familiar with like having an idea and then and then engaging um, at institutions and companies within that as opposed to as opposed to like going the other way and um, so I'm quite excited to sort of start that journey of like starting with an idea and then trying to move forward in how to develop that yeah. um yeah my fears are that it's that that's not attainable and that like a creative career is not attainable um like even now um and I know like Lucia's the same like working a nine-to-five and then having to like fit in and Ryan as well, and having to like fit in um, a piece of creativity here and a piece of creativity there, and get get into the point where you're just like overwhelmed, um, which can be quite exhausting. So my fear is that that continues, and that there isn't like the breakthrough moment that I'm hoping for. I've um, got a, another question, sort of to direct at you all as well. Uh, what changes do you think need to happen in the arts to ensure great representation from those that are facing barriers? So we'll get um, we'll get Sophia to start. With one. Um, the, the, can you say the, can you say the question again, please? Yeah, sure, no problem. It is, uh, what changes do you think need to happen in the arts to ensure great representation from, uh, from those facing barriers? I think, from my perspective and like from what I've seen, um, I think there's definitely a move in the creative industry for inclusion and diversity. And I think there's a necessity to move past um, sort of symbolic and like tokenistic phrases that attempt to include by saying we're gonna include um, without having the involvement from the beginning of inclusion. Um, so I think it's seen as more of like an end goal than like having a diverse workforce. It's like the end goal as opposed to it being like a systemic problem that needs work from the very source. Um, so I feel like in the creative industry, there is definitely a necessity to, to like unpick all of the prejudices without it just being, and the conclusion is we are diverse, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely see that. Um, how how about you, Lucia? How do you how do you feel about this? Um, I mean, I totally also agree with Sophia, but um, like thinking about where I was before I started Creative Futures and what barriers I was facing, for me, I, and I understand that there is a lot of funding out there for freelancers um, in the industry, but I think I like you have I had I've had to kind of go looking for it almost. So I think it should be a bit more out there I think everyone should know what 
financial support there is for everyone, like anyone who wants to be a freelancer or self-employed or in the, in the creative industry, basically. Uh, Brian, how do you how do you feel about this? How do you feel that we can ensure greater representation for those facing barriers in the arts industry? Um, I found that a difficult question, really. Um, mm -hmm. My my one thing that I would say is uh, I feel feel like independence should be championed a lot more and encouraged a lot more um, within creativity. A lot of people like. Um, I don't know, like an artist or a, a person, like if you're if you're just pushing it yourself, like you're gonna get there. But I feel like a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of helping hands that are out there, but but like that isn't like I, I feel like a lot of people feel like there is only like similar avenue, like um, certain avenues to go down, um, and and be that through opportunities or. or through somebody's, I don't know, latching on or whatever. I feel like a lot of people don't recognise their work as being as good as what they think it should. And they feel like they need external approval to help them flourish, which um, I feel like that is like a an enforced thing. Um, I feel like social media doesn't help as well. But um, nonetheless, independence should be championed. And that I, I feel like, like you keep pushing yourself, then things, good things will happen. Um, you don't, you don't need, uh, um, you, you don't need like these certain avenues that are, are available a hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think I just think for emerging people, there's a, it's easy for people to get dis, dissuade, dis, yeah, this yeah, no, never word that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I completely under understand what you're saying. There are like, there are like certain ways that people know how to get through into the industry, but also I don't think a lot of emerging people know um, alternative ways to get through and to work independently. And like, there's so many ways that you can do it. And how about you, Callum? Uh, how do you feel about sort of ways that we can get uh, barriers to the past? Um, I guess I do I, I really struggle with that question to be honest because I struggle to not see things through I don't know I, I've been so sort of focused on sort of looking inward sort of thing and the, the barriers I've kind of faced um, I've seen things that I need to change my relationship with that thing or it's a kind of I think living with a kind of some sort of health condition the constant feeling is that I need to be changing. I need to change my situation to be able to fit in. So, given that sort of question, I don't know. It's I sort of often don't think that much. But I suppose, as a general thing for all kind of institutions, a greater mental health support and kind of don't know open up that kind of dialogue and things more would possibly help help that. But yeah, it's it's difficult not to kind of keep being obsessed with my issues. I wish feel selfish, but yeah, <laughs> uh, it seems to go. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. If you're going, if you're struggling through something, it's hard to sort of think about it as like a, a wider thing. If you've got some like internal, um, internal things thinking about, do you think that then maybe there should be more awareness and more support by the industries about that, that people can be going through things like that, and that you know that they can sort of address that and sort of help. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess. I guess I've been seeing it that these are all kind of changes that I've had to make and kind of like go inwards, but there's nothing to say that institutions can't or shouldn't support that. And I don't know what way specifically, but if there's something that can sort of integrate that, yeah, helping. So it's not all on yourself to sort yourself out. But yeah, I don't know. Great, right. Well, we're going to open it up now to sort of the questions that have come in. Um, that have come in through the chat, so I'm going to just uh, get some of these questions out to you guys and we'll get them answered. Uh, okay, so I'm going to open up, open up with the first question is, how has 
how has lockdown impacted your work? So how has lock, lockdown had an impact for your work? So I'll start this one. Sorry, mate, you went uh, quiet there, I think. There's a bit there, sorry. Um, it's, how has lockdown impacted your work so far? Who is that for? Anyone? Everyone? Yeah, I was just, just, yeah. <laughs> it's going to start with you just to make it a bit easier. I feel like for me personally and the project that I'm doing, lockdown has been like a, has made a big shift in the, the speed of my project. It's slowed it right down. Um, I was just, I was doing my project in stages where I was, I was looking at the produce, the space, and then I was now moving on to the people and like the atmosphere. It's always a busy shop and I'm thinking, brilliant, right. So I'm going to start taking pictures of all the people. Then, then obviously this sort of came along and now the atmosphere is completely gone. And it's like, there's, everyone's a bit staring and a bit wary of each other. And, um, it's made my photographing of the project, um, come, become a bit more stagnant. Whereas that's maybe shifted me into using all the physical stuff that I have been, um, collecting to make like different works while I'm just like sitting in limbo with the with the actual um the photographing of people. Um so yeah. Um Sophia, how has how has the lockdown sort of impacted your work? I think it's actually made it easier because mm -hmm. what I do is just depending on what kind of thing that I am creating. So like if I'm writing a story it'll just it'll just be like i'll be sitting in my bed and i'll like remember something from like my childhood or like this suppressed memory and then i'll just write about it um or like i only write songs when i'm outside so like i'll just be in a park and then write a song and it just i think it's um made my process less static because before before create future i never had a studio space and then once I had it, I was like, it means I can only work when I'm in this room. <laughs> like, unless I'm sat at this desk, like I can't create. So it's just sort of reminded me that like creativity is organic and, and, and it's sort of showed me more with like what spaces I use and how I utilize them and, and um, how different physical spaces can engage different like different mental spaces for me so it's been quite obviously like I'm not saying lockdown's been great but it's just um helped me expand my perception of myself as, as a writer. And uh Callum what about you how has how has the lockdown affected your work so far? Um I guess what well, it's affected me a lot for sure but in terms of my work I guess it has kind of been a positive as well because that confirmation of yeah you've got to work from home suits me because before lockdown I was getting quite stressed and it was a struggle to get to a studio to work because for the couple of years prior to this I've been in my bedroom in a kind of lockdown way of working um, which is kind of frustrating because that was the whole point of starting this job to me was to get out of my bedroom and kind of start being with people which is kind of yeah sort of contradicted that but then equally before lockdown I was I was struggling with the job and I was I was considering whether or not I am ready to be back and work and so lockdown kind of suited for that and then obviously it's been a really stressful situation with the kind of background anxiety of everything and then the knock-on effect with my back again for a swim and osteo treatment and stuff but it, that negativity is kind of good fuel for more work so yeah it's it's a good thing for my work just not been that pleasant <laughs> and uh lucia how has uh, how's lockdown effect impacted your well, um, obviously starting the programme was um, had in the back of my head that this is going to be in an exhibition, I'm making physical pieces of work. So now I have completely changed that thought and actually gone for, right, this is going to be an online thing. How can I make it accessible and how do I want people to, how can I really make it stand out and how do I want people to see my work, not just like on a website, but you know, and that's where the whole interactive thing has come from. Um, so I look at that as a quite a good thing. I think it's made me start to think, really think about how my work should be seen. 
and how can it be seen by anyone um but then i think it has impacted me with it maybe has slowed things down a little bit um it's also hard because going back to the whole uh, studio space and I, I find that I get inspired a lot when I'm out and about and in different areas and meeting different people so now that's kind of stopped getting myself in that creative mood um you know switching from a, a day job to my creative job um has been a bit hard so it's impacted my work a little bit in that way but I'm going to try and look at it as a positive impact with the whole accessible and interactive side of things bit of a bit of a, a healthy thing to, to think about it more as a positive than a negative yeah. <laughs> um as for all your work uh, it's all in different art forms um and you're all on the same program together so how is that influenced influenced each other has like the fact that one of you may be doing poetry and writing photography has that influenced in the way that you you look at your own work um, I'll start that one with, I'll start that one with Brian, actually. Um, I think now, over the over these like last two months, not as much as we haven't had um, time to be with each other, but I think at the beginning of the actual programme, when we was all in the studio, we were bouncing ideas off of each other, and I feel like, me personally, I wouldn't have ever thought about audio unless Sophia was in the room, because um, the, the way that she's like, I don't know, it was just through conversations and stuff like and, and the the things that Sophia was saying, I thought, oh like I've never considered using sound as part of what I was doing. Um and and even like just thinking about the physical space in itself, like when we was just there in that studio, I feel like we were all like I don't know, it might even just be me, imagine that. But anyway, I I feel like we was all just like bouncing ideas off each other and like the way that when we was in the studio together we just have that sort of um back and forth that made us just think more in depth about our work and into like different different what's the word levels or layers um at least that's like that's what it's like that's what it was like for me um but haven't haven't moved away um i feel a bit more what's the word isolated from it all um so yeah yeah and uh for you callum how is how is as other people's sort of uh, that, that energy in that room when you're all together did that sort of that you were working uh yes i think so um i'm not sure specifics how that changed but definitely being in a kind of room with people and talking about work was just a really nice i suppose a nice change in the way I feel about my work, I suppose, rather than how I actually do the work itself. But it just, yeah, it's nice to be in a, a position where a conversation can crop up a bit more naturally, um, rather than it just staying inside. But then equally, I mean, at the start of the program, when we were more together, I was struggling to get to the studio. And I was feeling quite distracted by my back to kind of really feel started with it. Like it's only fairly recently I feel like I, uh, feel like I started properly. <laughs> so, but no, yeah, it's been good. Awesome. Right, let's get on to get on get through these questions, everybody. Um, do you think lockdown has made people uh, made people you know? Uh, sorry, do you think lockdown has made people you know more or less creative? I'll go for Sophia for that. Um, I think people have been trying to be more creative, and also it's like what. It depends on what your perception of creativity is because if baking bread counts then everyone's on it like there's this there's this push to do things outside of the norm and outside of your routine because your routine has been diminished essentially so yeah it's been sort of um people have made an active choice to 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 do different to do differently um and to try new things and whether that's like, I don't know, even engaging with different media and engaging with different like creative outlets and like watching new films and documentaries and listening to new music and just engaging with creativity more. Um, but yeah, I think, I definitely think people have um, looked to sort of the creative sector or like creative identity as 
um, as a response to, to the current situation, for sure. Yeah. I've got another question here as well. It's uh, lockdown has made spontaneous networking really challenging. Um, what would be useful to have, uh, what would be useful to have a better way to access uh, networks? Do you feel comfortable networking online? Uh, I'll throw it to Lucia. Um, I definitely don't feel comfortable networking online. I think when you're in person, you can really make a connection with someone and just engage better and have better conversations. But um, I think that having like having these networking sort of events online is is a good thing. I think it shouldn't stop just because we can't be around people. Um, it's just kind of maybe it's just me getting over the um, the online thing. Yeah. Um, what in particular is about what is what in particular is it about Creative Futures program that's been most important to you in your uh, creative career and journey? Uh, throw that one to Callum. Um, for me, I don't. Know, I suppose I'm still quite scared of the word career and kind of. So for me, this has been more a kind of get the ball rolling in using my work to help myself. Sort of thing. I'm still in that phase of kind of using it to help myself a bit longer and then see where that takes me in career. But I suppose that's still a vital step in terms of career stuff that I'm just still in that phase of, which I, the, the thinking was there previously, but this has been really nice to actually get it. Yeah, making and kind of like having to talk about it and explain it has been a good process for me mentally, I think, to feel a bit more clar clarified that I need to still step away from too much of a career for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think the lockdown has helped you tap into something within you that uh, that you might not have uh, access before? Can you sort of describe that? Uh, I'll throw that to <coughs> Sophia. Um, in regards to like this specific period of time, like like what um, Ryan was saying before, like when we're in the studio together, we just we it was just like constantly bouncing off each other. Like I think there was a sharing that we did, and we all basically had the same idea, but like specifically about our art forms, and we, it just it just like it it was very um, communal. Like our art was very communal. So this lockdown has sort of had it's been necessary for me to look into myself as an artist and like um and sort of become more independent as an artist um so it's definitely been a change and i think like a, a quite like an organic change into understanding who i am when i stand alone um wait did that answer your question i don't even i feel like i went off on a bit of a tangent there oh, definitely no i can do i can do what you're saying now <laughs> yeah. um sorry through some of these questions. What is your vision for your career, say two years time? Uh, what will help you, what will help you now to sort of get there? Uh, put it on to Ryan. What is your what, sorry? So, um, so what is your vision for your career, say in two years time, and uh, what will help you get there? Mm. Mm hmm. Uh oh! I don't really have a two-year plan. I'm a, I'm a bit I'm a bit short-term with stuff. Um, the next sort of stage of like what I was saying was uh, I want to try and make that shift between the like like Sophia was also saying about the having trying to trying to do the creative work outside of your work, but like. I don't know, just trying to shift that. In, uh, I feel like I pressure myself quite a lot that I want to keep making work, work, work so that, so that, that, that shift happens quicker. So I sort of want that to have, like, uh, I guess that's within two years, isn't it really? But yeah, make, make, making, that, uh, making that transition from like, having some sort of income from my photography, from something that I've been loving doing and like actually like wanting to do and I've, I've been outside of my actual work time to like really like push it. Um, 
yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like to work on projects like long, meaningful projects. Um, but it doesn't have to be like a commission sort of thing, but just something that I can like really focus on. Um, or failing that, I would like to be like working like physically within photography, like as in like a workplace, to so be that like studio um, or be that like photo lab. Um, so yeah. Uh, this one is for Lucia. Uh, what accessible and interactive forums would be your preference in creating that conversation that you talked about earlier? Um, I think that's sort of, I'm going towards being more online with my work. So what, what I meant by um, accessible and interactive was, um, so my work has come from having conversations um, and I definitely want to encourage people to also have those kind of conversations with people to think about at least what what I've been you know gone through um in ways of being accessible I want I don't really know just I want for anyone to be able to um to listen or to to take from it what they want and and make it sort of their own not just like they're listening to my conversations and that's that I want I do want to kind of spark interest or like inspire people to to talk about things like that. But I guess my I don't know if that's answered the question, but I guess those come yeah, that's a bit more like about my my work. So I don't I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in particular, what it, oops, sorry, in particular, what is about the Creative Futures program that has uh, that's been most important for you in your creative career journey? So uh, I'll send that one to Sophia. Can you say that again, please? Yeah, sorry. Uh, one particular is it about the Creative Futures program that's been important for you in your creative career journey. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, I didn't see myself as having a creative journey. Um, so it sort of um, allowed me to realise and my artistic worth, I suppose, and give myself time to delve into what I want to create and how I want to create it and who I want to speak to. Um, so there's definitely been a lot of developmental work that's been going on internally that's been, um, that's, and the platform has been given me, given to me through this, um, through the Creative Futures. And uh, what about the question for you, Lucia? What about, about you? Sorry, you talked to me. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's the same question. So, like, um, what in particular about the Creative Futures program has been most important to you in your sort of career journey? Um, I think the most important thing for me has been the support that we've had. Um, I think everyone that's been like involved in the whole program has had like different roles, and I think everyone has made me feel really like sure and supported in, in certain, all these different ways I think there have been so many things that I haven't even thought about before until starting this program and um, that I've been shown and you know we've been taught how to do and like put into practice in the real world so I think that also the opportunities that have come through uh, with all the freelance work has been amazing I think it's really um, helped me see what I do want to do and what I don't want to do and how I how I work and how I don't work kind of thing um but all at the same time it, that whole, it's just the support basically I think I felt really like backed with mm. with where I'm at at the moment and uh, how can we support younger young people to still feel confident about having a creative future when there's such bleak news about the sector um, can I hear about that from you, Ryan? So, like, what? Um, how do you feel like we can support young people uh, in the creative sector and make them feel optimistic about the future? Um, I feel like I just want to default back to what I was saying about um, independence, really, and just like pe pushing people to to do what they want. Um, because realistically, let's be honest, like any any anybody that's creative, they do it they're mostly they're starting off with their own back anyway. Anyone that's like 
we don't just get handed things anyway. So um, I don't know. In the current current climate, it's, just, it's a hard one, really, with everything balancing, isn't it? Um, I guess I guess a lot more uh, uh, like the alumni lunches and stuff, like a lot more peer peer networks um, would be helpful, just to create um, create conversation. Also, let let them know that other people are in the same boat. Um, yeah, especially in these times because we're all just in our own houses, and I I don't I don't personally. Um, bode that well with like these meetings and like like being on screen with things I'm very like physical so I, and I feel like a lot of creative people are so it, it, it must be hard for pe people wanting to do things but really, really not knowing where they want to head with it or um, what what their future is going to look like yeah how about you um, how about you Callum how about you for this question so how can we support younger Young people, young people, um, to still feel confident uh, and have in having a creative future. Um, I guess my I would say to be more kind of like what Ryan was saying. I said they, they need to be making work because they want to, and I think that needs to be sort of uh, nourished. If that makes sense. So see, like it's difficult because everything I feel has to be career oriented because you need money to survive. So I feel like that taints so many things, but I think seeing that in regards to creative stuff, it loses so much of the meaning. So if we could be teaching people to really see that personal benefit they can get from it, and then that can just keep it a solid thing. Like, yeah, I definitely, you know, you know, you want to pursue something and rather than it just being this thing of like, oh, I could do that job, which pays me more. And that's what makes sense. And that's how we measure stuff now is kind of money and stuff, not, I don't know what's good for you yeah definitely yeah um and uh, i'm afraid that that is sort of the time that we have today for the questions uh, as i mentioned earlier if you have any burning questions uh that you weren't uh, that weren't discussed here um or you want to know more about uh the cohort and their work then please do get in touch and i will pass on the details uh thanks for that and uh, back to you nick Lovely, just a moment to unmute myself there. Thank you, Rory. Um, so we're not going to keep you for much longer, a couple more minutes of your time. Um, but some, yeah, some, some fantastic work there. Thank you, Creative Futures, some really interesting and provocative ideas and reflections there. Um, we as an organisation have always passionately believed in the power of arts and creative practice to transform lives. Since the beginning of the corona crisis, it has become apparent to us just how crucial a role it plays in all of our lives. We don't have to look very far at all to see people of all ages turn into creativity to retain a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, or in cases to reclaim a sense of playfulness and light in their lives so desperately needed in these tough times. Through our work and the professional relationships we hold, we know that this is not a new thing for young people. Finding your voice, discovering who you are, creating and joining positive new social groups, things that we all too often take for granted as adults are a daily reality that is, are explored, that is explored by young people through consuming, through interacting and making of art and creativity. In times where isolation, something that we as an organisation have fought so long and hard against, is an externally mandated state of being it is the arts that young people are turning to in order to maintain a sense of self and belonging. For many, it is enough to dabble and play, but for some, the dabble becomes an itch, the itch becomes a passion, and the passion becomes what? It is well known that fewer and fewer professionals working in arts and culture or creative industries are from disadvantaged backgrounds. The sector's leadership is predominantly white and wealthy. Where are the clear pathways? the guides, the support, personal and financial, to ensure that the sector is representative of the communities it seeks to engage. How do we sing a song of plurality and value in the arts when schools have been told that arts are non-essential subjects by the government, which was in the news this very morning? Check it out. Um, so our new campaign, Creative You, is the spearhead of our work in seeking to ensure that all young people have equality of opportunity to engage with creativity and to participate in shaping its future. We need your help. 
we need your help to ensure that the role of creative practice in young people's lives is recognized and resourced and that the sector puts practical steps in place to ensure that its future is as diverse and as wonderful as the young people that we work with. So there are two simple things that we would like you to do. First of all is to read our report, which we will circulate with you uh, if we haven't already. Um, second is to read, up, read and, if you agree with them, to sign our pledges, which will then unlock further doors for you to engage with the campaign as it runs over the next 12 to 18 months. The link to our Creative You webpage will be in the chat shortly and we will email you the report immediately after this session. Um, yeah, as we reach the end, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Please keep an eye out for an invitation to the Creative Futures final show in the autumn. If you haven't already, please do check out uh, their work on their websites. It really, really is fantastic. I can't, I can't sing high, highly enough of the work they've made over this period of time with us. Um, and that's all for today. So we'll see you all soon. Thank you and goodbye. And it's time for the Zoom wave. So let's all do the Zoom wave. Yay! <laughs> um, and yeah, cheers. And we'll see you all soon. Bye bye.